Just two weeks ago at HPE Discover, HPE announced that they will enter the public cloud market focusing on AI and starting with large language models as the first service. Yes, <laughs> public cloud and HPE. This is huge. But what do we know about this right now? Let me tell you all about it. Hi, it's Marcos here again, and in here we discuss all about enterprise technologies from dummy slot covers to artificial intelligence. As I mentioned before this cover, I was genuinely nervous about the keynote because in my view, if Antonio Neri will not announce something big or at least spend a lot of time talking about AI with his keynote, HPE will miss the most important IT momentum in history. But my worries were futile. What they announced exceeded all my expectations. HPE is entering the AI public cloud market. You heard it right. HPE will become a public cloud service provider, competing against AWS, Google Cloud and Azure in their own backyard. There's a lot to unpack, so let's get right to it. First of all, what exactly was announced? HPE will add HPE GreenLake for large language models into their cloud offering, starting from the US at the end of 2023 and in Europe early 2024. This new service allows anybody to start training, tuning and deploying their large language models on the fastest computers on the planet, without the need to invest in supercomputers and spend immense amount of time setting up and configuring the technical environment. That's all done for you. HPE will not build its own data centers for this, like AWS, Azure, and other hyperscalers do. Instead, it will be using co-location services. The Colo partner in North America will be QScale in Canada. European partner is still unknown at this stage. In those colos, they will run Cray XT supercomputers with their advanced grid computing software and NVIDIA H100 GPUs. So that's at launch. But who's to say they will not build their own data centers later on if there's enough demand? Now, what separates this new service from a traditional GreenLake offering and makes it effectively a public cloud offering? Well, three things. First, resources are not dedicated to you. Other users and companies will have access to the same resources. Second, it's going to be physically running in HPE or co-location premises, not your data center. And number three, you can lease the resources for a certain shorter period of time. It's a smart move by HPE to make it specifically a public cloud service, because I can see many people wanting to train the model with supercomputers, since that takes an immense amount of resources. When the training period of, let's say, a few weeks or months is done, you can then take the ready model and move to run inferencing wherever you want. After a while, you can come back and fine tune the model with HPE supercomputers again, and so on and so on. The new HPE GreenLake for LLM will be part of GreenLake, like everything else these days with HPE. The LLM service is based on German AI startup Aleph Alpha's LLM model called Luminous. However, HPE says this will just be the beginning, a first of many models to come. The next ones are climate modeling, healthcare and life sciences, financial services, manufacturing and transportation. I believe we are witnessing a pivotal moment in HPE's history. Not only is HPE entering public cloud market, which is huge itself, but this has the potential to catapult HPE's as-a-service business to stratosphere and beyond. Of course, we need to remember that this is still just an early announcement and lots of details are still unknown. And this will be a highly competitive playground in the future, so many things might change and happen very rapidly. This is a very bold and risky move from HPE, but I do believe HPE has everything it takes to make this a success. And I have five reasons why, but I also have two concerns. So first, HPE is the leader in high-performance computing. AI needs a lot of computing power, supercomputing power. HPE is in the global leader position in HPC. As a tangible proof, HPE currently has number one and number three most powerful supercomputers in the world. By the way, shout out to the number three supercomputer, Lumi, in my home country, Finland. 
And secondly, HPE does have experience in providing cloud services. Of course, not at the hyperscaler level, but they are not starting from scratch either. They've been offering Flex Capacity Services and later HPE GreenLake for years now. So almost everything is ready for public cloud. Over the past years, they've been shopping quite actively to build their HPC, supercomputing and AI capabilities. In addition to Cray, they've acquired Determined AI and Pachyderm. All of those start to make even more sense now. HP is also putting a lot of emphasis on simplicity, and that alone might be the key to success. There are actually three equally important aspects to simplicity here. Too many AI projects fail because these projects are technically hard. HPE promises to set the stage ready. All customers have to do is bring their data, train, tune and deploy the model. Customers also pay for results, not for capacity. So if there's a hardware failure and the AI job can be completed as agreed, there's no charge. And lastly, this service includes running AI in the most sustainable way. This is increasingly important as regulators, especially in Europe, are requiring stricter sustainability actions and complying with all of them can be quite cumbersome. If HPE manages to take all of this stress away, it's yet another huge benefit for the customers. Last, but maybe most importantly, Antonio Neri. In his six years of steering the HPE ship, Antonio has proven time and again that his big bets pays off. From his vision of edge-centric, cloud-enabled and data-driven world, to acquisition of Aruba and 5.5 billion investment in the edge, and transitioning into a cloud company with GreenLake, they've all turned out winners. My trust in him is pretty high. But even still, the success is not automatic. I do have a couple of main concerns. And the first one is data. HPE does not have the customer's data at the moment. And having that is the key here. This is where hyperscalers have a huge lead and where they have focused actively on for years. That's the reason why they have so high egress fees. They just don't want to let go of that customer data. So where are the low hanging fruits for HPE? One option could be that the current HPC customers start to do AI too. They already have the data with HPE and they are used to HPE's high performance computing. Another one is offering existing HPC customers to burst into HPE Cloud instead of someone else. But by far the biggest opportunity lies at the edge. That's where HPE is very strong with Aruba already. A massive amount of data is being generated at the edge and lots of it is not yet turned into insight. If HPE manages to do this, well, the sky is the limit. But what comes to the data currently in the hyperscaler ecosystems? That's gonna be really tough. However, HPE does have one ace up in their sleeves here too. They are not planning to charge for egress. So your data is literally free to roam out from HPE Cloud at any time. This is actually in line with everything we saw on Discover Keynotes. HPE is not trying to build barriers between vendors, even competitors, but bridges. My second concern is about HPE's overall AI experience. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the experience is non-existing, but I'm not so sure if it's at the level that's required to implement an ambitious, large-scale AI as a service of this magnitude. But even if they don't have that now, I'm pretty sure and confident that they will figure it out quite fast. And by the way, who knows, if it all goes well, HPE might expand beyond just AI offering and start competing directly against AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure and the likes. I mean, what's to stop them? And it wouldn't even be a big of a surprise anymore after this announcement. All in all, this just may be the single most remarkable announcement HPE has made. I mean, ever. HPE has a lot of strengths and advantages that are speaking for them. But as I said, there are still also a lot of unknowns and I will be following this development closely. So stay tuned here in YouTube and follow my updates on LinkedIn. That's all, well, for now. Thanks for watching and see you with the next one.